Good afternoon, everyone. It's Monday, March 6th at 4 o'clock p.m., and we're calling the uh, City of Liberty Lake Parks and Arts Commission uh, meeting to order. Uh, let's do our call, our roll call. Uh, Nancy Hill, myself, is present. David Himbaugh, present. Laura Frank, present. Tom Chamberlain, absent, That's excused. It. Yes. John Barr, present. Noelle Laparco, uh, not present. Yep. And I haven't heard from her. And Bob Schneidmiller, uh, not present, but excused. So we'll move um, right from the roll call into the uh, February 6, 2023 meeting minutes. Did anyone have a chance to take a look at it? And were there any corrections or additions? I don't think my mom's. Probably not. What's the question Hello? Yeah. Okay. I'll motion to approve the minute as submitted. Second. Okay. It's been uh, moved and seconded to approve the minutes as written. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Please note for the record that Noelle has joined us. Thank you. Good to see you. Likewise. Uh, we're on to a look at the agenda, David. Sure. I wanted to uh, put a motion in place to move our story walk discussion up to item 4A, which would be after citizen comments. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. It's approved unanimously. We'll move on to citizen comments. Any citizen comments? Anyone on Zoom? Okay, seeing no citizen comments, we are thrilled to have uh, Spokane Tech here today uh, with Mark and some of the gang. And uh, are you gonna give us a little update on the uh, story walk for Orchard Park? Yeah. So um, my name is Mark Pitts. I'm from Spokane Valley Tech. I teach advanced manufacturing there. And I wanna introduce my students who are uh, the project managers for this. Again, we, we just started this a couple of weeks ago. David's been kind of pushing to have us get started, and I think we're finally ready. So I'd like to introduce Morgan Kavanaugh and Logan McMaster. They'll uh, give you the rundown on, on where we are starting out. Great, thank you, and welcome. Did you want to show your presentation? It, it wasn't. It wasn't. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. All right. And would you mind hitting the mic button? Wait, oh, yeah. hold it down for a moment until yeah. it turns off. The green light? Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Right. Maybe raise it up. You're tall. Uh, or raise it up. There we go. Uh, so I'm Morgan, uh, and we wanted to talk to you guys today about the story stands for Orchard Park, I think, uh, and what that project will look like and why we're why we want to be involved and what that all is. Okay, so with the current stands, with the current stands that uh, happened the uh, 2020 to 2021 students did, there were uh, two problems, or there was one kind of big problem that happened, but it wasn't, it just happened on one. It was the uh, leakage of one of the story stands. I believe, I don't know where it is exactly on the current status of the lineup, but We've, uh, that's kind of the main problem we're trying to fix right now with uh, finding ideas and solving it and prototyping it. And then um, what we noticed, Morgan and I, when we went and took dimensions and pictures of the story stands, was the uh, safety, the trident safety knife on the bottom. I don't know what happened to it, because Mark said that they were there at the beginning. And when we looked, the one that we looked at had none on the bottom. I don't know if it was a hardware issue that it's eight nuts and you have 44 stands I believe that took at least an hour to undo or if they got stolen. So I don't know whatever pleases you guys with the safety nuts if we have to 
just put on a regular nut and call it good and save some cost or continue with that and go on from there. So uh, for our improvements with the uh, bolts, uh, we aren't sure if that's necessarily um, like if it, if it was um, theft or if it was just inconvenient to take off all of those and then put them back on, if that was intentional. Um, so we're trying to find ways around uh, having it more convenient to switch out those um, and finding ways to uh, make it easier and the no leakage. Um, so a lot of prototyping and stuff. And then um, just overall, uh, we want to, with this project, we want to manage distortion. If you look at some scans, there um, are small and distortions that happen that can also lead to leakage later. Mm -hmm. So we want to really make sure that that is done, that these are built very well and um, cost effective. And, just really so overall a lot of organization uh, which it will be our job to just really manage it and a lot of communication and so we just want to make it better basically. and so uh, why we're interested this is a great community project for the city of Liberty Lake and for the residents um another part why we're interested is uh this is a great project for students because no school is going to do this project. It's involved with cities and even like our school, we have uh, projects, complicated projects, but only do one. And by the last scene of the project, there was 24 that were built. So that you have to manage time and everything, which no school does. So it's a great project to get students into the real world, real world aspects of a project management and kind of job with that. Um, owners give you or company managers. And then uh, third part where we're interested is for the uh, visitors of the park. It's a great attraction for families to go look at the stories and also enjoy the park because just a, a normal park is it's a park. People are going to get bored with it, but with the new stories going in, people will be more interested on in seeing what story goes in. I don't know what the rotation is, but whatever the rotation is. All right, so just to really iterate, um, it's a really exciting opportunity to even like have this. I know I was really excited. Uh, and so it's just going to be a really good opportunity for our school to experience the like kind of a more factory setting and just more for the community to kind of get out and, you know, have a little fun with the kids. Um, so we did a rough breakdown about how much it would be. Uh, for one stand and for, we also did for 20 and then for one. Uh, so for one stand, it would be around uh, $220 per stand, roughly. Uh, that's a, a bit over just to give us a little bit of wiggle room, but if we continue forward, you'd be, you'd be able to really break that down into a better price and have it a lot more accurate. Any questions? Does that include paint? Uh, roughly. With the uh, with last times, it was about thousand dollars with the primer and primer uh, powder coat and the uh, custom color you guys had, and we're estimating it will be around fifteen hundred dollars. But don't quote us on it because we actually we have to get a quote from the company and see what other companies can do for us. So that's moving forward. We'll get you exact numbers and get back to you on those. Well, we can't thank you both enough for coming in today or and being the project managers. That's a it's a big project and it's it, it is really important to our community and we appreciate your community mindedness. I was wondering, um, this is Jen Camp. Um, she is with the city and I wondered if you had something to weigh in on um, what their concerns with uh, with the, the safety, safety nuts and whether the convenience of switching out because you know I, what your team does. I don't know without asking my crew, um, but I'm wondering if they were so difficult to get on and off that it, they just left them off. That yeah. likely wasn't vandalism or theft, likely. Um, likely it was the crew just, they, they probably were kind of a hassle, but I'll follow up on that with them and I'll get back to you 
we're working on design where it wouldn't have to be as big of a hassle. And so we're going to talk to some more people about it. Um, so we can. Okay. Thank you. When were you guys out there to look at them last? Uh, we were out there, I think, last week. Okay. Uh, so the, the new book just got installed in rotation, probably minimum of four, probably a maximum of eight per year. So definitely four, but I know uh, the uh, library has pushed for more. So we're up to about a rotation of six right now. So the new book is, I don't know, Jenna, is it installed last week or do you know if it is? I would have to check okay. Trevor. It probably just got installed. Yes, it, it was installed Friday. Okay, great. Thank you. Any questions for this group? other than our sincere appreciation. I think it's great that you're working on a prototype to address the design concerns from the initial installation. That's really forward thinking of you. And again, we can't thank you enough for taking this on and thank you for coming today. Is that, Trevor, are you on with us? Who is that? that what are you doing? Yeah, I'm here. Was there, is there still much issue with the uh, the water seepage? I have not heard of that issue from the, the crew that changes it out, but I know it is kind of a hassle with those um, Trident security bolts and the nuts on the backside. So we are in the process of swapping those out. We're thinking like two wing nuts on the backside and two security bolts just to make it quicker to, and easier for the crew to change out. Thank you. Anything else, folks? Uh, when you do have a quote ready, would you mind emailing, email, emailing me that as well? And I'm sure David will get it, but I'll need that for for uh, procurement purposes. Thank you. Yeah, so I think what we need is, um, does this seem like something that uh, that you want to do this year? Um, so, you know, because we've got quite a bit more work. Um, these guys will spend a week getting quotes and things. So if it's something that we want to go ahead with, um, then we will. Um, you know, and again, we you don't have to say yes for sure. We just need to know, should we put more work into it? Is it a possibility? Um, and I also want to remind you that, um, is it Kiwanis that's going to be funding this? Yes. Part yes. of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I think uh, Kiwanis is going to fund part of it. And of course, we need to know colors um, and things like that when we get down the road. Um, and if you could help us, Jen, with getting feedback from some from uh, specific people, that would help a bunch of you give us some names for sure. them and, yeah. and find out what's really happening sure. right around. Yeah. So if you got that. And the colors are gonna, are gonna be the, tomorrow. Okay. All right. Will be the color of the, the flag to the right. Those are the orchard park colors. Okay. So and we'll need to pick one one is cheapest. <laughs> so I I would I would present to the council that we just pick a color now so that they have something to work with. And mm -hmm. I think I like the blue personally. And uh, I'll just kind of put it, does anybody think that they would like the teal better? I like the blue. I mean, Liberty Light, blue water. This the most popular, the most frequent color out there is the blue. There's just accents of the green. Okay, and nice the contrast yeah. to the red that we have at Rocky Hill. Mm -hmm. If you could send us the color sure. chip for that or whatever code it is, that would be awesome. Okay. Great. Great. Well, thank you so much for coming. We're excited. Can't wait to see it in use. All right. I'll get back to you, Mark. Thank you. All right. Thank you, students. Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome that they're working on the design and the changes. And very nice. So I can ask, do we, do we, what, what's our, our budget item for this, for this year? Anybody have their budget, Andy? Yeah, I've got it here, uh, 6,000. Okay. So and then somebody should probably reach out to Kiwanis. Yeah, for an I can reach out to Kiwanis. And okay. so we had, um, so that was 240 without paint, is that what I heard? Did you guys hear without paint? I think so, because they didn't even know what paint cost. Yeah. Was. So. Oh, he said it was, paint was 15, roughly 1500 yeah. Roughly 1500 okay. And roughly 200 And how many do we have uh, for this, for not knowing the number of stands we have out? 
which usually are more than what we need. I, just, I don't think it's 24 out there. Yeah, I don't either. No, I want to say there's like 12. I think it is 18. Maybe 18. So even yeah, if it was, more it, let's 12. say it's 18 at 250, that's, you know, that's seven, that's 7,000 and change. So plus the 1,500. Yeah. So the Kiwanis donation at that time was $2,500, I believe. I'll find out, but I, I'm pretty sure it was 2,500. Mm -hmm. So I need the extra costs in the budget. Was it for curbing and landscaping costs that need to go back in? Because we had it at 4,500 and then put an escalation factor just so yeah. the supply, supply costs increased kind of across the board. And we haven't spent all of our general line items yet either. So I think- I mean, the funding's there. I'm just curious if, if we had identified landscape needs at Orchard, like we ended up meeting too at Rocky. So that would put us at um, funding of over $8,000 with the cost of 18 stands at 250 at 7,300, if I don't do we, is this something that, that we want to get on, get it done this year? I, I think so. I think so. I mean, they're ready to go and they put in the work. I think we definitely do. We need to, do we need to make a motion to, okay, so uh, can I entertain a motion for that or I'd be happy to state one? Okay. All right. So I, I move that uh, the Parks and Arts Commission um, reach back out to Spokane Valley Tech to have them utilize up to 18 stands or whatever we need. Uh, I would say to move forward, maybe just with the development of the budget okay. and do Perfect. the same number of stands I'll that we have that. in Rocky. Right. I move the Parks and Arts Commission um, reach out to Spokane Valley Tech and to implement the story walk stands within our budget guidelines. Do I have a second? Okay. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, looks like that's unanimous. So yeah, it's a great project to move forward with and it is a budget line item. And if we have to move things around a little bit, it looks like we'll be able to do that. Jen, do you have a staff report for us? Yes, so I'm gonna keep it brief. Uh, not much has changed on the first item for park facility updates. All three projects are moving forward. Um, on number two, upcoming events, obviously Father Daughter Dance was last Saturday, and then um, the Easter egg hunt that was canceled, uh, the typical Liberty Lake annual hunt at Pavilion Park is still canceled, but there is a Girl Scout group holding uh, an event at Orchard Park. So it, it's nice to see that there is one. Um, I won't go through all of these, but they're all on cue as, as we've got the last meeting recreation update. We're still working on the yoga contract with Nikki Filardo of the MAT. Um, we should hopefully have that at council for approval on March 21st. And then thank you, Laura, for your OPMA renewal certificate. If anybody else has not completed that yet, I'm not sure who hasn't, who has, I can, I'll catch up with Kelsey tomorrow. Um, but if anybody hasn't completed that, please do. Um, and then, oh, I just wanted to do a quick reminder on the monthly council report, March 21st. Um, That's the date of the council. Yeah, if you want to decide on who would like to provide that yeah. report. I gave a brief update at the last council meeting. Um, and I, does somebody want to volunteer just to give a brief overview of, you know, kind of what happened at today's meeting to council on March 21st, council meeting starts at 7 p.m. And usually it's fairly soon in the agenda. Yeah, it moves pretty quickly. So. And you can uh, do it in person or via Zoom. The story walk stands would be a good one to mention. Yeah, they'll like the collaboration yeah. with Spokane Valley Tech. Anybody have an interest or availability on their calendar? Yeah, right. Sorry. What'd you say? Now? <laughs> I didn't have a body. Okay. Well, let me look at my time. Um, I did promise at the last meeting that they would meet all of us at some point. So, <laughs> so it's what time would it actually start? About seven. seven. 
seven, we would actually start. Well, seven fifteen, seven twenty ish. Okay. Right first, let me check here. Second, okay. I, I should be able to see the April. Okay. I can maybe do it over Zoom. Okay. Do you want to? Is, can, or, is it? Is that something that you are able to do, or we don't see why not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Via Zoom, and Jen will send you the link in your email, and uh, you'll also she'll also send you the agenda, so you can kind of see it's under staff reports, I think, and. Yeah. Uh, you just have to say, you know, when we met and what our focus on. You could even just focus just on the on the story walk, and whatever you're comfortable with and want to share. I can I can help you. Yeah. <laughs> Easy tips. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. All right. Into uh, item six: unfinished and new business. Um, I thought we should put the Hoop Town Selection Committee. Um, on the agenda because remind me, Laura, when the call to artist is due. I think we have 17th. Yeah. So you've done this before. Generally, um, as soon as that comes in, then we would uh, set up, we'd meet the selection committee would meet. Correct. Right. Yeah. So Um, so yeah, last time we had a selection committee and then I just prepared a packet of all the submissions that we had received and sent it out to the selection committee and prior to the meeting everyone had kind of selected their top five mm -hmm. and then we just met and kind of narrowed it down to what what the consensus was for the, the top picks. Um, in terms of makeup, we had um, a council member, which I would recommend including uh, we had a couple, we had a business owner, a local business owner, and then a couple community members that had expressed an interest. So we tried to get a, a cross-functional group. Yeah, I fa actually found in the public art policy and procedure, it suggests- um, It has a list, yeah. Yeah, art professionals, the project's architect, which we don't really have, citizens who reside within the city, city council member, special interest representative, representative appointed by council, uh, parks and arts members and city staff. I, I was thinking about it and um, I thought it'd be nice to have someone with a basketball perspective. And I know um, a, a young man that lives in the city that has played college level ball and now plays not quite semi-professional, but uh, with the uh, Lilac City Legends. And I just reached out to him and he said he would have an interest because I thought, oh, it'd be nice to have a basketball person so that we knew the court was functional um, with the mural. And that was an idea I had, but um, how did they go about in the past of finding a council person that would have an interest? Uh, I just reached out to one that had been supportive of the commission initially and just said, you know, if you ever need somebody, <laughs> So I, I would just recommend, and maybe Jen, you would uh, have a suggestion of who would be a good fit, but I mean, everyone on the, the council has been supportive. So I think as we go through these projects, just kind of rotating, so we're involving each of them at some point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we want to, uh, does somebody want to be in charge of selecting the selection committee, or should we do that as a group and work on it for a minute, or how did you do it before? We discussed it as a group. I, I'm happy to, if you have some, if, if people, if you want me to put it together, I'm happy if um, you want to send suggestions and then we can kind of just start it out. Or if you want to do it right now, that's, that's fine. Well, I like your idea of having a, someone that's in the basketball world. If we had a potential sponsor identified, it'd be good to have them on the selection committee as well. If it's somebody that has expressed an interest in the project. Um, and then the, the council member that was on the last selection committee is no longer a council, so I think we really we have a clean slate there. Mm -hmm. We could pick any of the council members would be fantastic to have on there. What about staff? Would that be Jen? I have a great suggestion for um, if Trevor Slocum will allow me to suggest his name, but he's a huge basketball fan, player. 
he does food fest every year and being that he's you know he runs those parks i think that would he could have some really good insight amazing. and i really like his perspective in terms of the maintenance yeah exactly yeah. going yeah. forward mm -hmm. as well yeah okay that would think it'd be great he's not saying anything so we'll see <laughs> all right, right. I, I can't argue with that i wouldn't okay. mind at all all right he'd be excellent i personally would like to be on the committee just because i kind of baby the project along And I'm happy if you want to kind of facilitate, but not be a selecting member. So yeah, there's not two commissioners, but I'm, I'm happy to to kind of help piece the packaging together and put in our meetings, but not be a voting member. Yeah, or you could be a voting member, and I could facilitate. <laughs> we can discuss. However you want, but yeah, you might be more it. artsy than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Any other suggestions about who we might have on the committee? Laura, if you want to switch it, it could be that yours is just batteries are dying. If we um, want uh, an art person, there is a gentleman that's going to be presenting um, next week, Rolf Gratzinger, uh, oh. who did the mural. Yeah. He's been very, he's been very helpful in this one too, just kind of reaching out, making sure that we're considering the paint side, the type of paint, yeah. and so he's been willing to. So he might, maybe he would be interested in being on the. Uh, unless he, he submits, I, he hasn't submitted yet, but if he submits, I would say. Yeah, oh yeah, that would, <laughs> probably not. <laughs> That's a great idea. I was going to suggest maybe um, Annette Carter, an art teacher, she's been living here in Liberty like forever. Um, but having she a mural the, list uh, would be a great idea. It'd be good to have somebody from one of the schools. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. And you said she is a teacher. She's a um, lake, I mean, the lake building. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't believe she teaches at uh, many of the schools. She runs an art studio out of her was out of her home. Um, it's called the Art Chalet. Does she live in? Does she live down there by where that is? Because it has to be in the city limits. Uh, <laughs> well, if anybody else has any suggestions, maybe just um, email you, Laura. Sure. Or, yeah, that works. And then I'll give you the name of the one gentleman and uh, we'll go from there. It's exciting, though. I can't wait to. How many submissions do we have so far? Two. Two. Two so far, well, but, but right. many, many correspondence about it. Okay. So, so there's a lot of interest. Well, there seems to be a lot of interest. And it, I know he's submitting, but the artist that did the Riverfront Park mural oh. uh, that he is submitting for, but he also said, if you don't select mine, I'm happy to answer questions or kind of counsel. Wow, um, that's generous. Well. So, yeah. I don't know if it's for a fee or if it's oh. uh, the <laughs> generosity, uh, or, but if he was still willing, if his is selected to kind of be a bouncy board for us if we need it. Oh, so nice. We just have to work through what nice. the details are, but. Okay, yeah. any other thoughts on the selection committee? Okay, I just wanted to briefly touch on the dog park. I think I mentioned a number of meetings ago that um, the owner of Popular Companions here in Liberty Lake, Mara Crowell, had approached um, me and she's very interested and she believes there's a lot of community members interested in the dog park. And for the newer commissioners, I, I think I brought that up. It was not last year, it was like the year before and made a council presentation and it is on their, their non-ranked list. Right. Of it's, it's on the CFP, the Capital Facilities um, uh, Projects list for city council that they approve every year with the budget. It's on their unfunded projects list to be to be determined. So that means they don't have they haven't had a lot of discussion, if very little, about it. They don't want to take it completely off their, it's like a wish list essentially. They hope to someday address it and put it on the CFP. The CFP is a six-year plan that shows identified projects over the next six years, um, including park projects and things like that. Um, and then they will identify a funding amount with it so that we can see in the next six years kind of the projects that we have laid out before us. 
So it hasn't been dog-eared for a particular year or funding yet, but it is on their wish list. And uh, Mara has been working and has identified a few local businesses that might contribute to something like that. And so while that's down the road on radar, um, kind of wanting to get more public input uh, from it, which is really kind of what Parks and Arts, you know, is to do to get public input on that. And Mara has arranged next week, I think it's the 15th, to go in front of the um, uh, uh, Community Engagement Commission just to give a, a little uh, nod to them about wanting a dog park and wanting to get the public involved more. And where they might do a poll at the farmer's market or there's some new software I was told about where they can get feedback from the public on what they want to see in Liberty Lake through some kind of surveys. And so long story short, she wants me to come to that meeting with her and give a little report on the logistics of doing a dog park because I know that from my days as the, as the scratch director. And so I've made a little PowerPoint and I wanted just to get your permission to kind of present the PowerPoint on behalf of the Parks and Arts Commission. If you're not comfortable with that, it's just basically what it takes to do a dog park and kind of introduces what a dog park is to the Community Engagement Commission. So, um, so I think the idea um, that they're going for is to, to um, rally support. And then that way, when it goes to council at some point, if the commissioners, if you commissioners take it to council or somebody, Mara takes it to council, they've got a good batch of support to go to go with it. Right. So the, is anybody, um, what are your thoughts on that? Is there a designated uh, location? No. We're the top of it. There's nothing other than an idea. Yeah, I think, I think it's probably with, before we start picking locations and potential designs and sizes and all that, we've got to just start with the basics and get the support. I really like the dog park over in, in Coeur d'Alene. Um, At McEwen Park? Yes, mm -hmm. where they have the small dog park and then the large, large dog park. Yeah, and I think that would be a really good first look for Liberty Light to start. That's kind of a pocket park, if you will, and and having the two designated areas. I think that'd be a great starting point for us. But but first, we really need to confirm that's what the community wants. And Mara is you know, willing to help lead that charge to some extent and to look for funding for it. But in order to find out what the community wants, I feel like I should present to them kind of what a dog park is. And, and I'd like to do it, you know, as a parks and arts commissioner. Because it's the same presentation that you gave to us before and to council that kind of breaks down what it takes in the budget. Of but I'm, I'm really not bringing any numbers. It's just basically what you need, so like a fancy right. signage and the benefits of having a dog. But it's the same basic yeah. presentation. I made it a little prettier into a PowerPoint. <laughs> Lots of dog pictures. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's this. It, I didn't research any new information. I took what I had. I totally support that. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're not deciding to recommend or do anything. We're just throwing the information out there so they know, so that they can engage with the community and see if the community has an interest. Okay, great. So I'll plan on doing that uh, with Mara uh, next week. And that brings us to uh, the end of our- Yeah, can I make one more quick mention? Yes. Um, in the- very last page of your agenda, the little agenda packet I have there, there's a picture and on the back of that picture are some costs. That was given to me by Tom Chamberlain uh, last week. He was prepared to do a quick presentation for you all on the trail of our project in Rotary. He didn't make it to the meeting today, um, so he asked me to pull it off the agenda, but I, I had already printed it. So I went ahead and left it in your packets. So whether you have questions or not, I will not be able to answer them. He did say he's going to present it at the next meeting in April. Um, so definitely come prepared with questions for Tom um, for that meeting. And I'll leave this in your, you know, obviously leave it in your packets so that you can review it and, and look at the numbers and look at the potential project and come up with your questions for Tom. The pictures, the pictures outside. Yeah, yeah I just read it. <laughs> I can say that this is for the uh, rotary room um, in the uh, 
new clubhouse so that would be um ceramic art that was presented by um see, melissa cole so as as we're, we're looking at some other options as well um but this is one idea to give you an idea of what what that would cost so she does amazing work she submitted a proposal for the pavilion park now was she the, the glass mosaic yeah oh um just for clarification their rotary is just looking for commission support of the project or financial role well we've got as far as i would i think they're looking for um well at, at this point here um i think we're looking for maybe some financial input i i know we have at least one other person that has got i don't think we really need to um put a proposal out there looking for a, additional artists right now that was my take from the last couple of meetings that i've been to was that we have this we also have uh another individual i'm trying to remember their name who's coming forth with a uh uh with an artist design as well so rotary from what i tell you know we're going to go through with this regardless so but obviously if we could you know have some uh, support from the city that would be a, a, nice as well so I, I thought when my rotary gave the presentation about it, they were going to circle back around and we were going to work together well yes <laughs> that was the plan so um I don't know what happened to Tom I expected him to make that this presentation today so he's spearheading that up um but well we can talk about yeah, it we'll just defer any further discussion really until uh next month Okay, sounds good. All right, anything else for the regular meeting? Okay, seeing that, we'll move into our workshop session. And thank you, Jen, for putting together the notebook and giving us uh, our homework reading materials. I thought, and I'm open to any suggestions, I thought that um, since the Parks and Arts Commission was formed via ordinance, that maybe we should start with the ordinance and uh, look through and um, you know start talking about uh, as as I think Laura you once said creating a roadmap so did everybody have a chance to to look at that and everything so in section one um, I had highlighted the uh, kind of last line parks and recreational and arts needs of the city. So that's kind of what we're supposed to be doing. So it's parks and arts, like our name plus recreation. And then I saw those uh, three items about kind of outlining, outline, outlining what we would need to be doing. How did, what does everybody think about that? So I had highlighted, because I don't know that as a group, I know, Jen, you and your staff kind of maintain the the Tree City, but the Parts of Cold Communities programs, that's not something that we've ever really talked about or focused on as a we haven't We haven't done bicycle communities since at least 2014 or 13, and that wasn't um, something I did, that was something, something in the past. Staff member did, so I'm not familiar with that. Um, and Tree City USA is, you know, the really it's kind of a two part thing. So I fill out an application every year online in December generally to apply for another year of Tree City USA. So they they tell us how many years we've been a Tree City, and all that is is a series of questions. How much money did you spend on trees this year? We have to have a minimum. I believe it's two or three dollars per capita in order to get this Tree City USA designation. So I, I go through and we spent this much on pruning, we spent this much on planting, we spent this much on blah, blah, blah. Um, so there's really nothing you guys can do with that. That's a staff driven thing. Um, the, the one, the other side of it is during Arbor Day. I mean, part of Arbor Day goes towards that Tree City USA application. We have to have a proclamation signed by the mayor um, as part of the documents for Tree City USA. Um, 
we have to have pictures of the tree being planted. I mean, it's just there's not much to do with Tree City USA for a commission. That's what I was wondering. It's kind of be removed from a little bit odd that it's on here. Just a reminder: if we go changing this ordinance or our public art policy, that has to go to council for approval. These were both approved by council. So if you do intend to make changes to it, I would kind of just say leave it and know that you're just know that it. it yeah. I, and if, we're, and if you need something, we're yeah, available. Oh, yeah, definitely. If I needed something or maybe you want to be a part of the Arbor Day tree planting and be in the picture with as Parks and Arts Commission, you know, that could be something. So, mm -hmm. and that says bicycle communities programs, park use, including rules and regs reservation stuff the fees so that you guys do approve every year in the proposed fee schedule and so capital improvements i mean that would be something like the shade structure yeah Rocky Hill. yep i was wondering if perhaps under bicycle communities that it could also possibly include golf carts because with the abundance of golf carts there's a lot of people out there who let, let me do a little research on bicycle communities i think it is I think it's something similar to Tree City USA. It's kind of a designation because I, I remember we used to have these signs like the Tree City signs that said Bicycle USA, like or bicycle bike friendly. Kind yeah, of. something. So let me do a little digging on what that is. I'm not overly familiar with it, and then I'll mention it in my next staff report. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I was just going to ask if maybe I'll I'll just do it on my own time then research a little more into bicycle communities. I know we have a lot of, obviously we have tons of walking uh, trails and sidewalks and plenty of people who are active cyclists, um, myself included. And being a parent of a young child, I get a little apprehensive taking my son for bike rides on some of our busier streets. I don't think a lot of our maybe citizens or people passing through are remembering to really watch out for cyclists mm -hmm. and pay a lot of attention. So I don't know if the, for this bicycle communities program might have a way for us to put up more signs or better educate better education. Yeah. Or if like, I don't know, say at the end of a concert at the park, someone just says, hey, watch out for cyclists. Yeah, and that very well could be what that is, is to focus on bicycles in the community, the safety, the, uh -huh. yeah. Okay, I'll, I will definitely research that. Yeah. Maybe there's some grant money in there for free bike helmets. Yeah, or there could be. Yeah, who knows? Okay. okay, well, thanks. That'd be great if you could research it. Because yep. maybe there's, like you said, Noel, we, there's some things we can do to keep our community safe. Yeah, mm -hmm. so if we can post like a bicycle safety course for drivers. We've done a, a, what do they call it, a bike rodeo in past years, I remember it was years ago, and I think it was the Kiwanis, they did it up at Pavilion Park, where um, either Kiwanis or the PD handed out helmets to kids, and they had like a little bike rodeo for the kids, teaching them safety, talking about safety, that kind of thing. So that might be something we can incorporate into our barefoot event too. Uh -huh. Yeah, that'd be a little yeah. bike rodeo with some safety and whatnot. Well, that's a great idea. So on, on the capital improvements, I'm wondering how we could set up some kind of a, a way of us to be involved where it's just kind of an automatic trigger when it comes up that it's on the radar that it would. You know, and it's funny, that's the one document I didn't include in here. I knew I was forgetting something. Um, I think what I could do on that is at the next meeting introduce our capital facility facilities plan that we put together last fall that was adopted for 2023. And it also has the outlines, you know, six years total. Um, introduce that to you so you can see it, get familiar with it, see how it's made up. It's kind of got special sections and parks kind of has its own section. And then um, as staff and council start talking about the capital facilities plan um, in this upcoming budget season, as soon as we start having those conversations, um, I can bring you on board and give you updates. Um, you can weigh in on some of those uh, those items that will go into the capital facilities plan or be updated or changed. 
Um, you can look at the unfunded projects list. Um, I know I showed you the other day what that looked like. So I'm happy to bring that back at the next meeting for, for an introduction, kind of a quick introductory overview of what that is, what it looks like, and how you'll know we're planning big projects in our parks and what years those are going to lie in. Yeah, I mean, I think to me, the idea of a roadmap is so we're not playing catch up, that we're kind of you know, in front of it, and we have an opportunity to weigh in and uh, give some feedback, and particularly if it's something visual that could be uh, functional public art, if you will. And, and you know, we could even get, you know, those kind of reviews mm -hmm. on, on our strategic plan and, and just instead of finding out afterwards about stuff. Jen, I think that's what prompted our, con our conversation um, a couple of months ago with regard to the shade structure mm -hmm. structure. And, you know, I do like that idea. You know, it allows us to to weigh in and then we can prioritize how much we need, how much the council we want to weigh in uh, on that specific um, uh, item. But I but I do like that idea um, sure. of getting that in ahead of time to us. Okay. Um, you know, I, I look at it as, you know, our, our goal, um, many obviously, uh, but one is to advise the mayor and city council on everything, you know, parks and arts related. So if we were presented those things, we could say, you know, yeah, that's great. We're going to go with your recommendation or no, this is what we'd like to weigh in on. And then we can at that time really see if that's something, you know, that we want to take on as a project ourselves and get more involved with. That was my, my intention when I had um, initially reached out to Jen when there was something in the minutes about the shade structure at Rocky Hill Park and just wondering if, if we needed to be involved in that process more. Sure. And it might just be that, you know, we just say, hey, we trust what, what you guys are planning to do and mm -hmm. great. Or you may have a different suggestion and idea. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Well, and I think it, it really guides our strategic plan because right now our strategic plan has been, for the last however many years has been projects that we've discussed and that we feel passionate about or the community feels passionate about that's been brought forward. But but then to Nancy's point on some of these larger capital, like the, the bridge overpass, for example, it, it, we, we miss our opportunity on that. And I think if we're reviewing them at, at CIP, then that guides what that strategic plan looks like. And then if there's other items that we want to, to put in addition to those, I just think it really helps, you know, drive that roadmap and what those goals are moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I suppose potentially, if if we thought a, a capital improvement project uh, might be an opportunity for some functional public art, we could even um, add something to assist with the project into our our budget. I would imagine mm -hmm. that's certainly going to help kind of use, I guess, our strategic plan for our our roadmap. And if we have you know those items on there then then we we know what we're looking for because i mean this is my third year on the parks and arts commission and the first year was was covid basically and that was hard not knowing anybody on on zoom and stuff but it just seems like projects just kind of fall in our lap and and then we deal with them versus the the roadmap of what's coming and and how we can plan that out and I was looking and I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but in the public art policy, there was something about, I think, strategically placing the art in the city. So it's not all in the big clump, you know? So it's, it reminds me a little bit of the conversation that people had that where they wanted Christmas decorations on this side of the freeway. So how can we, we spread, spread the, the joy around the whole city? So I think that would be really helpful to know what, what was coming up. I think our strengths as a as a commission lie in the the creative end. I mean, everything that we put forth together and that has come to fruition has been from our creative end. And so, you know, that's the part that I enjoy working with on the commission. It's you know, it's not so much, and I do I do know that we need to weigh in on the cost to run a ball field or do something else. Um, my initial thought when I became part of this, you know, the inaugural year was, is, you know, was to do, was to do creative things. And I think that's where we've had our most wow factor of successes, you know, on the creative event. And that's where I'd like us to stay focused. Um, 
uh, and then you know prioritize these other items um you know lower down the list and that that's kind of my thinking so that we're not we're not spread out and we lose our creative end because we're too focused on you know um, items that we don't have as much control over anymore well and i think those go hand in hand and and i'll use an example of a, a project that hasn't come to fruition when we looked at the rock sculptures that that would be well placed at pavilion park and then jen had brought up well we might be changing out the play equipment at some point right so i i think the the creative focus goes hand in hand with the improvement plan of we know we're making park improvements okay how can we piggyback on that or to Nancy's point if there's an opportunity to incorporate functional art with a project that's going on that pulls in the, the creative side but rather than kind of just trying to compile lists then we have that that path forward of okay we, we've done some stuff in Rocky we've done some stuff in Orchard now let's go focus on pavilion to, to really spread it out and, and really looking at what's going on but, you know, absolutely to your point, there's going to be items where we say, you know, we, we trust what you guys are doing and there's really not an opportunity to, to add, you know, art enhancement to it or programming. Um, but I, I think they really do go hand in hand. And then um, I think there's some projects that don't cost any money at all, but can be uh, uh, very useful as well. I was thinking about a couple of years ago, with the uh, library, we did a, um, a home garden contest, and everybody sent photos of their home gardens, which is basically their home art. Mm -hmm. and, and actually, there was a very good uh, um, response to it. And you know, I would think you know maybe make that kind of a more annual event because it it was nice, but then it the kind of dropped, and I you know making it the annual thing where people can get behind it and maybe in August when all the flowers are in full bloom, everybody submits their uh, photos and you can have a traveling trophy or something like that. Well, who says there are like a garden district in downtown Cortland does a garden tour, it's an annual walking tour. So yeah, that would be good of the uh, of the uh, yeah of the uh, and people are so proud of their gardens so yeah. I think that would be uh -huh. A big hit and something else I was thinking about um, at the library we were talking one time about um, because there's such a strong interest in gardening that uh, bring in a master gardener for regular um, events where they just kind of teach a group of people I mean you could have it up on the little hill there at the library and I'll bet you could have a real good turnout for those as well. Maybe the master gardeners would have a booth at, at uh, Barefoot in the Park. It's mm -hmm. a good idea. Great. Sure. Good I used to reach out to the ones at WSU whenever I had a question. Oh. They were always eager, you know, by email, they were always eager to tell about. Yeah, they want to show it and share their experience or the knowledge. Yeah, yeah those are, are great ideas. Oh, and one last thing I was thinking about was. I think at the last meeting we had that the, the mayor had that large uh, uh, the bean the bean, bean. bean. yes mm -hmm. I was thinking that would be you could probably get some woodworkers and you could uh, make that into a welcome to Liberty Lake and then you can put the uh, symbols of like uh, Rotary and Juanus um, even put the name of the the high school and stuff or the different of the various school. But I think that would be. I, I sent a picture of that being to my brother, who's a, a, a landscape designer and other. He's an also an industrial designer. And he said that it's laminated, it looked like from the picture, and it was an indoor beam. So it might be a maintenance nightmare to oh. put outside. So maybe you want to have it as some kind of indoor art, like a, a bench or something like that. I don't know if there'd be anything in the new trail place, but we definitely need to find a place for it. But we don't want to create a maintenance nightmare for uh, <laughs> Jen's team. But getting back um, to the ordinance, so under that section one, we've gone through the capital improvements, the public art, which I think you know we're, do we're doing really. 
well on that. And then it says other matters as directed by mayor and council. So I, don't, I guess we don't know what those are unless they would unless they came up. correct it. Yeah. And then on item two, to explore ways and methods of obtaining private, local, state, and federal funds for special projects in the city's parks, trails, and open space. And um, I don't know too much about what the history of the commission is as far as doing anything under number two or how we might, you know, look at that moving forward. Well, I feel like we do a lot of yeah. our, a lot <laughs> of the, the, we, we don't, we haven't really necessarily gone state and federal, but no, we do a lot of private sponsorship. Our, yeah. yeah, I mean, I know we have the regular partnership with STPU for the, uh, the mural was sponsored, the, mural. the statue here was sponsored. That was sponsored. That was, yeah, most of our, first one, yeah, nice. Most of the art has, has come from sponsorship. Yeah, I, I think that's actually one of our strong things yeah, right now. Sure. Other than the going out after state and federal dollars, maybe, but that's a full time job. Yeah, <laughs> I, I know on the on the on the community court mural, we were saying that maybe we could get potential sponsors in on that. I personally haven't really asked anybody because I was hoping we would have some kind of art to sell a person, but. That's something as we get down the road and today is probably not the day for it, but to keep in mind about how we would recognize sponsors if we got them for that. I know we have hoop fest for uh, backboards and stuff, yeah. but um, I think some businesses might contribute if we had, I don't know if we, around the edge of the court, we did logos or, but that's more painting or we just did some kind of signage or, um, you know, we before we are going to go for a sponsor, I think we need to have something that we're going to be able to offer them. And I don't know personally what that would look like. So that's something to think about. Maybe we can put that on the agenda to brainstorm. Yeah, and I need to look at our donation ordinance. It's um, it specifies signage, and I know we have a city ordinance related to signage, kind of the do's and don'ts of what we allow. So we would want to fall in line with our city ordinance. So I'll I'll uh, dig up that I'll dig up the donation ordinance um, and bring that to when we have that discussion. Okay. Most of the courts, it's the center. I said center that, yeah. court is where the, yeah. the logo, the primary logo is. I don't know if they've had other. It's been multi care that's been sponsored, and I know their contracts almost stop, but yeah. I think they've sponsored the majority of them. Yeah, they they gave them a million dollar grant, but I think it's mostly new stuff now. I don't, I mean, based on your comment, Jen, about changes needing to go back to council for approval. I mean, I don't, do you want to go through the line by line or? Well, I was just, I was just going to go through these three. Yeah, okay. And then see where you want to go from there. The, uh, the three to advocate for healthy and active lifestyles, promote the quality of life, uh, through parks, trails, and open space, including the tree and the bicycle community programs so um and I, I don't think that it wasn't my understanding we were coming to this ordinance to ch to change it and take it to council we were coming to this ordinance to understand what we're supposed to clarity do. between yeah, what the mission's role is what staff's role is i feel like it's broad enough mm -hmm. yeah right. yeah so i think that's the goal today yeah to understand and sort of reevaluate there is a lot more language in this ordinance than what we've been doing the last five years. Pretty much been art heavy. Yeah, it's been very hard. And then the occasional recreational piece. I mean, right. those are the big guiders of the ordinance. The rest is a lot of just yeah. meetings and terms. Yeah, and, yeah all That's that kind of stuff. Yeah, the, the bulk of the expectations. Oh, and then section five is kind of an important one. Section four and five. Oh, it yeah. actually addresses duties and responsibilities. Yeah, and I had underlined that written report, which yeah, the strategic plan. I was going to ask if that counts. Yeah, as our that, that's or kind of what I was thought is that it strategic plan acts as the written report. That's about the time yeah. we, no. we submit it so yeah. for the budget talks. I didn't know if we had to, because we don't really talk as much in, in that document about what we've accomplished in the previous No, we can do it. We can do so. like a paragraph re relating to what we did this past year. I think that would be wise to add a paragraph in there. Well, what we did in 2023. Yeah. And we can maybe submit the strategic panel with like the cover sheet. Yeah. Kind of thing that, yeah. Super sensitive. Yes. Yeah. 
But absolutely. And that said by September, but that's kind of when the budget is. Yeah. Everything is due anyway. So. I, go ahead. I was going to say, did, have we engaged the uh, the um, community engagement commission to yet to see if there is potential projects, art projects, art projects that that the city actually would like to see? So interesting that you bring that up because I had um, the staff liaison for the Community Engagement Commission approach me Friday asking what projects does the Parks and Arts Commission have that we as staff would like to let the Community Engagement Commission know are out there so they can get feedback. And my suggestion to him was rather than staff have this communication, I advised him, hey, why don't you have the Community Engagement Commission come to somebody, come to a Parks and Arts Commission meeting and make that connection to the Parks and Arts Commission and then vice versa. You could go to somebody here, could go to the, park, the Community Engagement Commission meeting and introduce yourself, establish that communication with each other and have that conversation with each other. So we're sort of the, I think the Community Engagement Commission is now getting established enough to start branching out to, well, how can we support other groups, other commissions? But my encouragement would be, and this is just my opinion, if you completely disagree with me, tell me I'm wrong, um, but to have the commissioners meet the commissioners and put forth the request to be involved, be, you know, help us be engaged as parks and arts, whatever the case might be. So that's that a good idea. question. Because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go about the dog park with, with Laura at their next meeting on the 15th, I think it is. And, uh, but I love the idea because that's my understanding from David, the, the liaison, city, yeah. the city staff liaison, that um, the city is getting some new tools uh, to engage the community. Uh, well, I can't remember what it started. The Zen city. city. Zen, Zen city. Yeah. And uh, so maybe we could have someone from the community engagement commission come to our next meeting and let us know kind of how they can help us uh, to figure out what the community is interested in. I think it's a great idea. Jen. Yeah, I think it could be a wonderful partnership to have them support you and what you're doing. And yeah, if you have something you want to inquire to the community about, they're going to be the the um, they're going to be the way to do that. So well, when I go next week, I can tell them that we, we're really looking forward to working with them and see, you know, if they could come to our some send a representative or however many they want. Mm -hmm. I guess they couldn't make a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, how many are on that commission? Do you know Mark? Is it seven? You're going on the fifth. I believe it's seven. Yeah, I think I think they're I think that's seven. they're very similar to which time you're gonna meet them with you. Yeah. Maybe here. Maybe yeah. Typically the third Wednesday uh, right after Six PM. Planning commission. Planning commission six. They typically meet at six PM. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have on my calendar to come at six PM. Okay. Because I, I promised Mara I would come with her. So, but I can and I can invite them. Yeah, absolutely. Why don't I invite them to come here and then they can and then if they want us after that to send somebody there, then we can certainly do that. But I can I can make the ask. I think that's a great idea because there I noticed a, you know, a lot in our public art policy and procedures there was a lot of community engagement in there and that was all written prior to and this is a council approved document too correct mm -hmm. and that was all written prior to there being a community engagement commission so it makes sense that we would partner with them mm -hmm. And if they were out in the community and they wanted one of us to be there for something special, I mean, I'm sure we could, but they, they're, they I think, going to have their finger on the pulse of the community to find out that kind of Okay, that's a great idea. So what else do we need to look at on the ordinance? We saw the annual report. We did some with the fees and that sort of thing. So that's kind of been on our radar. Which section are you? I was on section five, number oh, two. Okay. Go back to, if you don't mind, uh, section two, triple I there, the triple. student representative 
Well, where do we stand right now? We we haven't had a whole lot of success with that, and, and I'm wondering, um, while it's good to include that, um, I, I'd rather see somebody, number one, get involved that, that wants to be involved, uh, not to maybe you know, sign up to say that they were on the committee when it comes time for college application time and uh, um, and actually get involved. I mean, is this, is this something that that's a requirement or is this something that we want to have? Because, you know, I... Uh, I don't think I don't think my suggestion wouldn't be to remove it from the um, from the ordinance. It just stays open yeah. as long as it stays open. If it, if you choose not to fill it. Now on the flip side, um, I have only received two applications since. Uh, oh gosh, what was his name? Shrikar. Yeah, Shrikar was on, and that was that's been a long time ago. Yeah. And, and the, the first one was um, last fall, she withdrew her application. And the second one I received was about two weeks ago. She doesn't live inside city limits. Uh, does, um, is that a voting position? Yeah. I didn't see. I, well, I, you know, I don't think it's outlined. I know they voted in the past. Uh -huh. I think those two students that we had speak earlier, they were very well spoken, maybe perhaps 10 minutes. Yeah. So if they live in the let's see what the student in the city limits, she'll be a high school student who resides in the city of Liberty Lake. So as long as they live in the city of Liberty Lake, they can Which apply. Not necessarily. Yeah, they could, but they could. I know it's unfortunate to turn the one gal away because she she's an art lover. She's interested in participating and offering her feedback, and I was like, oh, she doesn't live it. I wish it didn't say that. So, yeah. I guess we'll have to understand that it might not always be a filled position. Yeah, but we can keep trying. And with students, it's a little bit more difficult. It's definitely an issue. Do we need to reach out to uh, somebody at the local, say, high schools to? So I have been in touch with okay. them multiple times. And we'll do they do they engage conversation with you? They get back to you and. Uh, they said they would put it. They put it out on one of their mailers that goes out to parents on Fridays or every other Friday or once a month. So it went out to like every student that okay. parents get the mailing. Um, but I'll just continue. Maybe I can get a hold of somebody in the art area that I can really have a conversation with and see if they can yeah, get that a might feel be, for. Yeah, that might be good. We could focus down where they could ask in a classroom instead yeah. of abroad. In an art classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that they've at least heard of the staff because they did the art for those utility boxes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Anything else in those first few seconds or? We still on section five now. my own clarification if you don't mind yeah, this is dated um 2018 the Peterson is obviously not our mayor anymore um who is the city attorney Sean Bells still mm -hmm. oh he doesn't have to live in what he like to be the city attorney <laughs> and he's contracted to it's not the city yeah we don't we don't have a full time city attorney the contract is permanent and so, anything under five that um, looking at the policies and fees, community event partnerships that's barefoot and some of the yeah, yeah, yes. And so again, it's just that feedback. If, as I present to you those those events that are happening on my staff report list, you know, I leave it to you to if there's something you want to weigh in on or you want more detail on to ask. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the city side, city events side. And I think 
we've probably been doing a decent job on recommending public art policy and projects because we this a lot of projects have come out of commission now. And then if there's ever a time on the park open space trails, we have a, a park open space, what's it called, and trails plan. And I think the last time it was updated was in 2013, 2012. Okay. You can find it on the website. It's like a 70 some page document. It's huge. huge. But it's a it's a planning document, and I'm not planning, so forgive me. Um, trails and open space master master plan thing. Oh. Um, so when it comes time, if if we end up updating it, that generally will go through building and planning. Lisa Key is the one who would actually update that. But that's another good area where you would weigh in on that whole process. So just just so you know, it's not something we've ever touched. It's not been updated since I've since we've been a commission. So. And it, I think the plan is to not update it anytime soon. So it'll be a while before that happens. So there's no like plans for trails or pathways that are in the works that. Um, some of that is called out in the CFP. So the CFP is going to be the more current document. Um, the, the master plan is sort of all encompassing of okay. now, again, being that it was done in 2012 or 13, it, there, it, I don't even think Ocean Park's in there. So it hasn't been updated since then. So there are some things missing from it. Um, but the like, if we're going to be doing trails somewhere or sidewalks somewhere, that's going to be in the CFP. We actually have a section for um, trail, uh, what's it called, trails, paths, and pedestrian traffic or something. I can't remember. It's kind of Lisa's wheelhouse. I don't know. So it would bike paths be in that too? Yeah. Uh, because I suppose if that was updated, that we would want to be able to weigh in on it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. That's a huge document that the absolute commission would weigh in on. It's really a lot of statistics. And this is this is the Pavilion Park, and this is when it was built, and this is the history, and this is what the amenities are, and this is Rocky Hill Park, and you know, lots of uh, lots of uh, data in that report. The, I, I, I don't, I don't know if I, if I have the right impression, but like trails that are kind of in a development. I'm just going to use Rocky Hill as an example. Like along Country Vista, there's that black asphalt trail from Mission to New Apple Way. Mm -hmm. Is that a HOA? H, that's an HOA. Yeah. And is there any connection between? The HOA, and if they were going to do something, if the parks and recreation, no, parks and arts, I mean, would not be it. Yeah. Is there Just, anything where builders have to, would want to talk to us about something? Not unless it's on city property regarding parks and arts commission. Now, all of that obviously goes through building and planning department um, for different reasons, but give me an example. Well, I mean, there's a, like there's a pocket park that went in fairly recently. Yeah, Rocky Hill park that's and, those are all um, generally greenstone built right. and then handed over to the HOAs. And I noticed like a couple of doggy way stations just went up, but apparently those are HOA ones. And mm -hmm. I was really glad to see them, but uh, pardon me. Okay. We're not voting today, are we? I don't know. I hope so. All right. All right, thank you. Um, so, so get back with me if there's anything you need me to help follow up with. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, David. So, so there's no, there's no, that's a completely, completely separate. Yeah. Not to say there couldn't be a partnership there, you know, with. The builder of the park, if the Parks and Arts Commission wanted to say, say or recommend something um, when the park is built, an HOA park, um, that, that's never out of the question for trails. But, or... Yeah. Okay. 
performs other duties and powers as may be conferred by ordinance resolution or may. I always love those disclaimers at the bottom. <laughs> so any anything that comes up in this ordinance that you think that we're not getting enough information on, other than we talked about the capital improvement projects. Um, we talked about the annual report. There's going to be research on the well, on especially on the bicycle communities, and then maybe on the, the Tree City a little bit. If you get a little bit more on that, what are we missing here, folks? What's the um, process for adding items to the, to the strategic plan, like uh, um, you know potential projects that can be. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's all us. The strategic plan is ours. The, like I said, the public art policy and procedures that was council made, I'm assuming at some point after. It, it was drafted and approved by the Parks and Rec Commission. Oh. And then it went to council. And, but the final approval. Okay. But the strategic plan is all ours, but something. Um, yeah. And I was talking to Jim briefly before me because we have a, a lot on our plate today. But she was suggesting that maybe in the early to mid summer, we put the strategic plan on our agenda and we can review where we are on it and what we see coming forward and adjust it. And we need to, we'll need to make our annual report for council and set the budget. And that has to be presented by the end of August. -ish. You know, roughly um, directors generally turn their budgets in by end of August, very early September. Yeah, so we might wanna put it on our June agenda. So if we need to come back around to something, we could do it in July and still have time to prepare everything. But um, yeah, I, the strategic plan is where suggestions, you know, come from within the group or someone brings an outside idea to us through the Community Engagement Commission or um, just through contacts uh, with folks in the community. And then we can see, you know, what things we're interested in, like the gen rock, the idea of the graffiti barrels. And, you know, we picked that up as a project. And I saw what they did at Riverfront Park with the community courts. And, you know, we started working on that. And um, so ideas can come from most anywhere, including from within the commission. And then we can discuss them and uh, see which ones we think have merit to move forward in, in, the, in this year or the next year, or, you know, for three or four years down the line. And then of course, budgeting for the project. And, that sort of thing. Does that yeah. answer your question? Mm -hmm. Great. Laura, what else were you thinking we should talk about as far as the roadmap? Do you want to get into the public art policy and procedures or? I mean, I did when I I did a quick review of it and I I don't think there's anything that that we're not hitting that, I think it was more just clarification. And, and Jen, I think you already touched on it with, if we're looking at the project plan, then I think that'll help because I, I know from your end too, you don't necessarily want everything to have to come through the commission because you guys are on time frames. And so if we can better plan for things that are happening, then I think that was really my main concern mm -hmm. when this is first time talking about this is where where are we headed and like kind of having that yeah instead of playing catch up where are we going yeah and you know, even with the strategic plan we're doing that a little bit and, and it, we have the flexibility right we make adjustments where you know the, the story walk for example there weren't students to do it or the class came back you know we were able to shift it to a different year and then reallocate those funds to a, another project that came up so we have that flexibility but I just think kind of that bigger picture of out or you know looking out where are we where are we headed and, and knowing what those larger projects are just help us to better support you know the staff and, and get the community feedback and, mm -hmm. and to be active in that so I think it was more is there anything that anyone saw as outliers in here that we're not doing or should we be or things that well maybe we, we need to be looking at um and when I look through the public art policy and procedures, I mean, it seems like, you know, 
a lot of that was already in our wheelhouse. The big thing that stuck out to me was the um, community engagement. And now we have a commission for mm -hmm. that. So yeah. that, I think that really solves a lot of what my questions were when I when I look at that policy. But I think if next meeting we have on the agenda the, the capital um, improvement capital stuff, yeah. and then the, the tree you were saying yeah. and the, the bicycle community and we get some clarification on all that, then um, we can start, you know, brainstorming and talking. Well, we'll be more informed as we go into our strategic plan and updating that and adjusting it, and, and then, uh, you know, setting a, a budget ask um, for next year along with that. And I guess the other item that had come up that I, I think kind of fed into to wanting to come down this road is from from the staff perspective, and, and Jen, I'd like your thoughts on this, is when when is there a trigger that, oh, we should involve the park, Parks and Arts, or is it us looking at it saying, no, we want to be involved in it, and not to keep going back to the overpass, but again, that's a, a missed opportunity where we weren't on the same page, and not, not with you, but you know, in general, there was some confusion on are we involved, are we not, did we vote on something, did we not, and so just that, that clarification of, of how how that process works. And I don't know that that's really laid out anywhere in these documents or if it needs to be, but um, just again, so we're not going back and saying, oh man, that was a big missed opportunity for us to be involved in something. Well, and that's my goal with this, this upgrade on the staff reports is to try to think about all things we oversee as operations and maintenance department. Um, Which has been fantastic. And to break it out by facilities, parks, events, and programming, those are the key things we keep seeing over and over again that, that you have a responsibility to weigh in on. And so my goal is to start there because then it forces me to brainstorm on a monthly basis, anything new and different in those four categories. Mm -hmm. And so if there's something new and different, I mean, really, no matter how small, it's going to be on that report. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm probably going to miss something from time to time. And if there's something I'm missing and somebody knows about it, call me out on it. Um, but at least that will encourage some discussion so that if you want to weigh in on something as a commission, that's your opportunity to say, hey, you know, can we do something here? Well, and I love the format of, of how you put that together. And I, I would say it's still probably just those bigger projects of, uh, is there at some point that we're, and maybe this is all going to flush out with this, you know, the capital plan review of saying, oh, maybe we should have one of the commissioners that's engaged in in this planning just so they're aware of what's going on and if there's any opportunities and um and I don't know if that needs to be spelled out in any well, of these documents. Well the ca the capital facilities and, and I'm looking at the strategic plan and it says strategic aims design and implement financial st strategy for long-term art sustainability and it says capital improvement projects. So the yeah. CFP CF CIP are two different things but they're in the same document, the okay. CFP. Um, and I'll explain all that next next time. Um, but basically, the CFP is the is the larger projects. So it's not um, it, it's not the donations like Daughters of the American yeah. Revolution, right? That's not a CFP project. Um, it's not what color we're painting the pavilion, right? Uh, because it needs to be restained. Um, yeah. But because I'm going to have those things to update you on those four pillars every meeting, you'll know about that. And if you want to weigh in on what color to stay in the pavilion, you'll need to let me know that. But, you know, I'm not going to assume you want to weigh in on that, but I'm going to have it on there so that you understand. And I'm going to try to think to the best of my ability from your perspective, what do they want to know? Uh -huh. Right. Well, Trevor's changing his sprinkler head. <laughs> park tomorrow. Yeah, you don't need to know that. Yeah. What time? <laughs> but if I think that you want to see the park, if I think there could be interest in in and value in a topic related to something, it's going to be in that report. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we start. Yeah. And until we kind of get into a groove of what you expect from me and what I'm mm -hmm. trying to think ahead of you on and get mm -hmm. to you before yeah. we go and do it. Mm -hmm. And so that will include things like if there's a donation, like a DA or now to be fair, that happened in one week and I, I had one week it. to implement it. <laughs> and I was scrambling. So thank goodness it didn't happen because it probably would have gone with the flagpole. Um, because I hadn't had that discussion because Trevor had been in my place and that didn't get relayed to me. Um, 
but there will be times where I have to make a decision as a staff member that I cannot, I cannot wait till the next meeting. Probably in that case, I'll email Nancy and let her know about it so that she at least has a heads up. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, everything that can wait, I'll have it on the left and uh, You know, I, and I know I said it earlier, but I was just a little surprised that, you know, the trailhead is a city owned building and Rotary came and gave that presentation. And then now we're seeing our, I just, there was some disconnect and there. Is, How can we avoid that? And that one, I didn't even know about. So I don't know how. I, I had a relation when he said it's happening regardless. I was like, isn't that the city on So, and I, yeah. Or yeah. I don't know what, what the agreement is on that. In those, I know, you know, in those that, cases, I don't know. I really don't know what to tell you because if I don't know about it to tell you, is I don't know about it to tell you. And I, I just don't. And that's why I was hoping Tom would be here today. And I, 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 told, I told him there will be some questions as to, you know, why isn't the Parks and Arts Commission involved? So be prepared. He's fully prepared. I mean, is, they, they, is that a, 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 like if it was that art that they want to move forward that we have the picture of? Is that something that City Council would have to approve? That? Yes, um, because it, it it will now whether they go forward and I'm not the staff person working with them, so I could be wrong. But if they go forward, they're not likely going to go forward and say, "Can we put this art piece here?" They're going to go forward with a donation of such and such art oh, piece. Oh, I see. And it will be presented to the council that way. So the council will be approving the donation, right? Um, okay, that kind of brings up a question that I had. I um, apologize if I'm backtracking a little bit here. I totally agree with you. It's a bummer that we missed out on being able to include some kind of artwork in the building of the Kramer overpass. Mm -hmm. That would have been awesome. That, does that rule out the impossibility of adding artwork? No, yeah, not at all. So um, there, there's talk of putting we have potential artwork at the at the beginning of the bridge where it's going to be city property. It's going to be landscaped in there. There could be potential for artwork there. There's going to be a little piece of land on the corner of Kramer and Country Vista on the south west corner that is going to be a small, we're hesitating calling it park, like an open space. Oh, that will be city owned that something could go there we can also put things in the roundabout on kramer and mission put a piece of artwork in the center there or so while we did miss out on the bridge um but yeah we definitely have other opportunities somewhere around the bridge yeah okay this brings me back to john's suggestion of uh the, the big plank the big board saying the pretty way and on that bridge not that it's Really bad. Well, so WashDOT has some pretty, pretty tight regulations as to what can go on that bridge and everything, just so you're aware, to bring you up to speed, has to go through WashDOT on the WashDOT property, which is the bridge. But once you get off to the, what do they call it, the very the beginning point, kind of the approach. The yeah. approach, thank yeah. you. The approach of the bridge where it's city landscape property, that's a different story, that's our property. And so I'll just send them a gift basket. Yeah. <laughs> so but yeah, it will tell you it will it will bypass the step of block thought if we stick to the approach and the roundabout and the open space. Much easier. It's too bad that beam is laminated and wouldn't be good outside because in that little, we won't call it a, a mini pocket park or whatever it was, you could have a nice bench, you know, but yeah. So, so just as staff, do we do we have clarity on kind of what staff the expectation for me is and what I'm going to attempt to provide? Yeah, and you have the donation policy on your list too. I do. Yes, yeah. I have all of that written down in asterisks. Asterisks. No, I think I think knowing all that will really help us in being our roadmap. I just like that term. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, of where we're going and. And what it looks like it will help us in building our strategic plan as we move forward. So I think that'd be great. So I mean that sounds like most of our agenda or a good part of our agenda for next time. And then we just need to remember maybe in June to start the strategic plan yep. mm -hmm. uh, discussion. And we will be having the uh, gentleman um, that did the mural at Pavilion Park. Mm -hmm. He's coming to do a short presentation at our next meeting because he uh, he loved the graffiti barrel. 
uh, program and he wanted to know because the library was I think when they gave the presentation we're looking at tweens as doing that and he would like maybe a couple barrels for uh, special needs projects um, so he wanted to just talk briefly about that so, so Ross will be on the next agenda okay Ralph. Right. And Ross, so I, it's Ross or Rolf? No, no, this is Rolf Gottsinger. Oh, Rolf. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Okay. And I wrote down the spelling. So next agenda. Yeah, he kind of, he reached out to me uh, through the city email after the article in the splash on the Parks and Arts Commission. And he had that resonated in the graffiti barrels. And he'd be willing to take on somewhat of a role in, in that. So I said, well, why don't you tell us about your idea when you come? Because we want citizen feedback. So he'll, I didn't want to have him at this meeting. And he said, well, that'll give me time to prepare. So they'll be our April meeting, which is at that later date. Do we have that on there? That's on April. 17. 17, yeah. So on the April meeting, will it be the 18th that we have to report to council? What, the next day? Yeah. Is this, that enough time? This, I don't know. I'm just wondering if anybody wants to sign up for the April. Well, I think more I wrote you down that you can do April. I'm available in April. Yeah, I can do that one. So you want to do the April 18th one? Okay. Yes. That's tax day according to mine. So as, as commissioner's volunteer, where I have um monthly council report under item four, five, I don't know, five, five. That's group yeah. Um I'll put down who's committee and okay. what meetings so it will be on the next agenda. So I have Noel for March and I have Laura for April. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So oh, what I, uh, I have a, uh, an idea for something that maybe we might add to the agenda or at least pass around an idea. Okay. Uh, I think probably the sooner the better. Mm -hmm. um, I know I myself as parent of a young child, I'm beginning to think about what I'm going to do with my son over the summer. I work full time, you know. Um, there's a program that I've come across called Activity Hero. And it's it's an online website and it teaches tons of art classes. There are um, week long, several week long programs. I, I should clarify, multi week long programs, week long programs and one time programs, as well as, I mean, beginning language courses, um, STEM projects, things like that, camps um, that cover, I mean, all age ranges from infants to 21 year olds that I'm not sure if a lot of our parents are utilizing, but I'm sure a lot of us are going to be thinking about what the heck we're going to do with our kids mm -hmm. for the summer. And being that it's really rather art heavy, art centric, I wonder if there's a way we might partner with the site. They use all local instructors um, who might highlight them in some way, mm -hmm. or if that's more of a community engagement. So they would need, what what they need to have, what they need to do to, for the city to sort of advertise them, is it free? Or does it cost? Everything that I've seen is free. So likely what they would need to do is basically the city would treat them like a contractor, like an outside um, contractor, then, okay. right? similar to Skyhawks and Challengers. Right. And so they would go under contract with the city, but that might be a program that Giandi at the library or library director might be more familiar with. She's more okay. into the programs with the kids and such and, and through different contractors. So I don't know how we would do it through the rec side. Is it all online? Um, Sign-ups for classes are all online. Some of them are Zoom virtual classes. Uh, most of them are in person. Okay. So as a city, we have to be careful who we're promoting. Um, so that I would have to check into that with legal um, to find out what we can and can't do. If they can contract with us, we can we can promote them. Um, but typically, businesses okay. that are uh, for profit, we that's that's we stay away from that. But Jenny. Wait, might okay. chat with I'll reach out to her. She might have some ideas on how to take that and run with it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else that we think we need to cover in the workshop regarding our roadmap? 
Anything? I, I think this has been very helpful, just the, mm -hmm. the clarification, and, yeah. and I really appreciate how you're doing your staff reports and, and how you've structured it. I, I think it'll really mm -hmm. just, and, and I think some of it's just change over too, or just with the, the confusion and clarification mm -hmm. what the rules and responsibilities are. So mm -hmm. well, this is, I think you know, this has been good for me, just even looking at this again, it kind of triggers a few ideas. I think it'd be nice to, uh, maybe it's before we do the strategic plan, but just, and maybe not this year since we just reviewed it, but on an annual basis, just go back and put our eyes on the, the documents mm -hmm. for maybe every couple of years or something. So it's a refresher. Mm -hmm. So we can make sure we're still on the right path. And Well, it seems like it, and it would be helpful with, with new commissioners coming on, just mm -hmm. to be a good introduction because like I said, I came on during the, the one of the COVID years and you know just seeing some little faces on Zoom and not knowing a whole lot so I think you know the commission what it was formed in 2018 and you take you subtract out a couple of COVID years this is a very new commission really so I think this is I think we're starting to figure it out so yeah thanks Jen appreciate that you're an awesome well I know I have more clarity so that's good <laughs> Success. Any other ideas for that you want to see on the agenda next time? Because while we're sitting here, okay. And if you would like me to recycle your binder, you, you feel like you're not going to keep it, use it. I'm happy to take it and recycle it. We will reuse them. Otherwise, you're welcome to take it home. I'll keep that. I can do that. Yeah. Might move it to a bigger oh, file and give you back the one. Oh, can I make a couple of comments before you adjourn? Yes, please do. Yeah. So well, thanks would, for attending. By yeah, way. you bet. I, and I hope to make more of these depending on schedules. Uh, that's my plan anyway. Um, I would suggest maybe considering accelerating your strategic plan conversation by a month. Um, we are accelerating our budget process by yeah. a month this year, and so um, maybe moving that up just so. just to make sure that you have. Um, some meat to go into that budget discussion. So maybe May. Whatever you would have originally planned, yeah. maybe just move it up. June. So yeah. I said June, so that's maybe let's do May. Okay. Um, and then the second thing, and this is I don't know where this fits in your your planning and decision making, but has the commission ever considered having like a what I would call a, a, a an art competition for locals for for people that live in Liberty Lake? That would be judged by the commission members and maybe incorporated into something like Barefoot in the Park or something. Wasn't there something the I chalk. read about the chalk thing? You did yeah. the chalk walk that was during COVID. COVID. We did that during COVID. Was that a separate or was that part of Barefoot? No, we didn't. We no, didn't have separate. Barefoot. That's right. That so we did that separate. instead in lieu of Barefoot in the Park. That was really cool. And we had somebody, somebody at Pavilion who did a parasol course. Coming out of the concrete. Yeah. Right? Or we had an artist that. The pictures are on our yeah, Facebook. Yeah, I didn't trust the camera. That was something that looked like yeah, or something. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like very you were stepping into it. We've yeah. also talked about doing, uh, I mean, this was early on, but like a sculpture walk where local artists could submit it and then the community would vote on it, and whichever one oh, land would be purchased as a permanent installation. Wow. Um, there's a lot of we could research communities that do it on it. I mean, they're larger than us, but they did on an annual basis where it was a sculpture walk through their parks and then it led to supporting one of the artists. And we talked about that for some of the media and art that we, I, there's bigger items, but I love it. I think it's a great way to engage the, the art community. Mark at the Barefoot in the Park last summer, we had a parks and arts booth with rock painting, mm -hmm. which was kind of fun. And we even had some, some big kids it do it. It was pretty busy. It stayed yeah. pretty consistent yeah. as a simple art project to uh, kind of engage. But it might be fun to do an art contest. We could get maybe the splash to advertise it like, you know, in a month before the the barefoot and have them on display there. And, and and that can look any way that you, you want it to. That was just a suggestion, yeah. right? Just to think about it. And we talked, I don't know, I'm not super familiar with the trailhead building layout, but we had talked, I, I guess I don't even know if it's been on an agenda just through email about having like a galley wall where we could feature local artists on a rotating basis. Oh, so 
I like that. Being with the, I don't know that it's ever made an agenda. We talked about it kind of early on, but I don't know if I just need to go walk through the building or, or get more familiar with the plans, if that's even yeah, a good spot for, yeah. for that. But just like you're saying, just more engagement with our local artists. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe in the restaurant. I wouldn't mind seeing the plans. And his restaurants do a lot of local yeah. art support. Mm -hmm. Through his restaurants in Spokane and Idaho. I wonder if there would be room for a beam bench in the inside the new building. I don't know. I don't know if there's any kind of a lobby area or anything in there for the restaurant or pro shop. Yeah. If not there, maybe in the new library. Oh yeah, maybe in the new library. Good idea. Yeah. I just if we find an inside place, then we don't have to worry about the, the maintenance mm -hmm. right now. No, I love that idea. We'll have to maybe do some brainstorming about how to engage the community in a little art, especially for, for barefoot. Is if it ended kind of with barefoot, whatever it was. Okay. Any and anything else, Mark? No, that's it. Thank you. Well, thanks for coming and thanks everybody for, I, I just really like our um, brainstorming and figuring things out and excited about what's coming forward and we're looking forward to hearing all that cool stuff from you, Jen. So if there's nothing else, then I guess we're adjourned.